Some years back, a certain Egyptian funerary offering stela caught my attention. This particular stela was used in the funerary process of an individual who it identifies by the name of Anchef and Khansu, which can be translated as meaning, he lives in Khansu. The etymology of the word stela is New Latin, from the Greek stele, a usually stone slab or pillar. This particular stela is made of wood and covered with plaster, which has been painted on both the front and back surfaces. This stela is a fairly typical example of offering stelas, as employed in Thebes, wa'ast, as it was known, toward the end of the Third Intermediate Period. This one is dated circa 680 to 70 BCE. Several similar examples can be seen at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. This stela was not on display when I visited there in May of 2013. I have been told that it is in storage until the new Grand Egyptian Museum opens near Giza. What follows is an explanation of the illustrations and hieroglyphic text using methods of contemporary Egyptology. I have typeset the hieroglyphs herein for clarity. We will begin by examining the figures appearing in the vignette at the top of the front side and the text that describes them. Arching over the top is a figure of the deity called Nut, though she has no accompanying text on this stela, naming or describing her. Next, we see a figure of a winged solar sphere. The text beneath it is read from right to left. It reads, Behudet Nutyar Ha'a Nept Pet. Behudet, Great Nutyar, the Lord of the Sky. The word Nutyar is the masculine singular form of the Egyptian word usually translated as God or Deity. More literal translations might use words like power or force. The feminine form of this word is Nutyat. The masculine and generic plural form is Nutyaru, and the feminine plural is Nutyarut. In discussion of Egyptian religious concepts, I use the forms of Nutyar and the word Deity interchangeably. The name Behutit is an abbreviated form of Harubahutit, or Horus of Edfu. In modern Edfu stands one of the best preserved temples in Egypt. On its walls, the legend of Harubahutit appear in Bah relief. This winged solar sphere is a form of the deity Haru, or Horus. The round glyph with the X shape in the center, denoted as O49 in Alan H. Gardner's sign list, is what contemporary Egyptologists refer to as a determinative. Determinatives are usually unspoken glyphs used in conjunction with other spoken glyphs to more clearly define the context. In other words, it's a semantic indicator. In this case, although it refers to a deity, this determinative indicates an association with a specific place and geographic location. Next, we see a seated figure. He is hawk-headed with a solar sphere and Uraeus serpent upon his head and a was scepter in his hand. The text associated with this figure is read from top to bottom, right to left. It reads, Ra-ha-ra-achti, hare nacharu. Ra-ha-ra-achti, supernal of deities. Here we focus on the name, Ra-ha-ra-achti. Taken literally, it could be said to mean Ra Horus of the two lands. It could also be said to mean Ra Horus of the two horizons. Behind Ra Herachti, we see two glyphs, a hawk perched atop a standard, a symbol for Amenti, the west. We could look at these as the deity Her Amenti, Horus of the west, or as separate indications of Amenti the West, and the presence of the Ba of Haru, Horus. We will discuss the concept of the Ba soul a little bit later. Next, we will have a look at the human figure on the right-hand side of the vignette and the hieroglyphs associated with him. This figure is the person to whom this stela is dedicated. He is depicted in a posture or gesture called Nis, that is, a beckoning, making an offering, to Ra Herachti. The hieroglyphic text here reads, in this example, from top to bottom, left to right, Auser Chamnuchar Manchu Nebwast Un 
Ahui, Nupet, M. Epitsut, Achaf Enchansu, Ma'a Charu. This may be translated as Ausir, Osiris, priest of Manchu, lord of Wa'ast, Thebes, opener of the doors of the sky in Apitsut, Karnak, Achaf Enchansu, true of voice. Male persons in such funerary texts are referred to as Ausir, that is, Osiris, indicating that they are deceased. Similarly, women are referred to as Hothat, that is, Hathor, or sometimes as Auset, that is, Isis, in such texts. The person appearing here, to which this stela is dedicated, is identified as Achaf and Khansu. Here we see the glyphs that compose his name highlighted. The name Achaf and Khansu can be translated as he lives in, or for, Khansu. Khansu is a member of the Theban triad comprised of Amun, Mut, and Khansu. In the Karnak temple complex, there stands a temple dedicated to Khansu. Achaf and Khansu is identified as a priest of Manchu, a deity with a strong martial association, who also has a significant presence in Wa'ast, Thebes, Karnak Temple, and elsewhere in the vicinity, which is modern-day Luxor. The paddle or boat oar-shaped hieroglyph following his name is an abbreviated form of the expression Ma'a Charu. Though here it is shortened to just Charu, it should be understood in its full meaning. Ma'a Charu is often variously translated as justified, victorious, or more literally as true of voice. In funerary texts, the deceased is referred to as true of voice, likely with the intention that they are recognized as such in their journey through the afterlife. There are various ways in which this can be written in hieroglyphs. On this particular stela, we find it abbreviated simply by the boat or shaped hieroglyph, denoted as P8A in Alan H. Gardner's sign list, or in conjunction with the plinth-shaped hieroglyph, denoted as AA11 in Gardner's sign list. This glyph, with the phonetic value of ma'a, is shaped like the plinth, which anthropomorphized versions of the deity ma'at, nuchert of truth, balance, and justice, is often depicted standing upon. The last item of note which we find in this vignette is a table on which offerings are made. The glyphs beneath the table are read left to right, describing the offerings. Tehankt ka'u aptu. Bread, beer, cattle, and fowl. There's an interesting side note here with regard to the cattle and fowl. There appears to be a connection between ka'u aptu, as cattle and fowl, being made as offerings to, or on behalf of the deceased, and ka'u aptu, meaning ka, spirits, of Aptu, or Abydos, the city of Osiris, being near homonyms, though they are written with different hieroglyphs. I think it likely that this play on words is intentional. I recently observed a double play on words appearing in the eighth hour of the night as depicted in the Amduat. Likewise, similar literary devices are employed in the Hebrew Old Testament, in Psalms and or Proverbs, as I recall. In English today, the words soul and spirit have become virtually interchangeable, losing much of their more subtle meanings. That has not always been the case. In fact, languages such as Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, just to name a few, make very clear distinction between their words for these concepts and their contextual usage. Those of us familiar with the Hebrew Kabbalah are likely aware there are at least five different words to denote specific aspects of the soul. The ancient Egyptian language and religion are no less detailed and specific in this area. Regarding the ba and the ka, a simplified, quick explanation of these words associates the ba with the soul and the ka with the spirit. Again, in simplified terms, one could say that the ba is, in part, elements of the personality and life experiences, whereas the ka is the essence of spirit or a mortal part of one's being. 
This is not a comprehensive explanation, but gives a brief illustration of their significance as separate concepts. Now we move on to the body of text beneath the vignette on the front of this stella. This is a form of the text known as chapter 91 of the Book of the Dead, or Book of Going Forth by Day. The term Book of the Dead, or Totenbuch in German, was likely coined by the Egyptologist Karl Richard Lepsius. Lepsius is also credited with devising the chapter ordering system by which the spells of Egyptian books of the dead are numbered and identified. This system was devised circa 1842. In this case, chapter 91 is a spell for not letting the deceased's ba soul be imprisoned in the duat, that is, the transitionary realm. Beginning in the upper right-hand corner, reading right to left, the hieroglyphic text begins, Jed medu en ausir cham nutyar manchu nept waast un ahui nut pet em apitsut achaf en chansu ma charu. In English, words spoken by ausir, the deceased, priest of manchu, lord of waast, Thebes, Opener of the doors of the sky in Karnak. Achaf and Khansu, true of voice. Here we see this line closed with ma charu, true of voice, written out using both the plinth and the boat oar characters. Continuing from the next line down, in the upper right hand corner, reading right to left, the hieroglyphic text begins a ka dua. Tuaf ur ba'u ba'a shafit dedu nur efen nucharu hau har nestyaf ur. O high one, may he be praised, great one of power, soul of great majesty, who brings fear of himself to the nucharu, shining upon his great seat. Here we continue where indicated on the third line down. Ar wa'wat. En ba'i en achi en shut i iu aper kui webini im aper. Make ways for my ba soul, for my ach spirit, for my shut shadow, as I am equipped so that I may shine as an equipped one. Continuing where indicated on the fourth line down, ar ni wat ar bet netet ra. Atum chepari chutat im. Make way for me the place which Ra, Atum, chepari, and chutat are in. These four deities, Ra, Atum, chepari, and chutat, may be more familiar to people by the Hellenized versions of their names Ra, Atum, Kepra, and Hathor. Likewise, some may recognize their inclusion as such in Liber L. Valegis and their adaptation therefrom in Liber Resh Valhelios. Continuing where indicated, completing the text on the front of this stela, we read, Ausir ham nuchar manchu nept waast achaf en chansu ma'a charu sa minu ba sa. En mut ar en achit en amen ra nept per ta neshit. Ausir, the deceased, priest of Mantu, lord of Waast, Thebes, Achaf and Chansu, son of a man with the same titles, Ba'sa en mut, given birth to by a musician of amen ra, the mistress of the house, ta neshit. The closing of this passage once again identifies Achaf and Chatsu as a priest of Manchu in the area that is modern-day Luxor. It goes on to identify his father, Basa and Mut, whose name may be interpreted to mean supporter or protective of Mut, female figure of the triad of Huast, as having held that office before him. It also identifies his mother, Ta Nashit whose name may be interpreted to mean hairdresser of the land, as having the office of sistrum player for Amun-Hara. 
Now we move on to the back of this stela and the body of glyphs comprising the first five horizontal lines of text. This is a form of the text known as chapter 30 of the Book of the Dead, or Book of Going Forth by Day. It is a spell for not letting the deceased's heart create opposition against him in the Dua'at, or transitionary realm. Beginning in the upper right-hand corner, reading right to left, the hieroglyphic text begins, Jed Medu and Ausir Ham Nuchar Manchu Neptwa'ast Achf and Chansu Ma'a Haru. In English, words spoken by Ausir, the deceased, priest of Manchu, Lord of Wa'ast, Thebes, Achf and Chansu, true of voice. From the second line where indicated, the hieroglyphic text continues, Abi in Muti Sepsen Ha'ti and Wenini Tep Ta M Ah Ah Ari M Meti. My heart of my mother, my heart of my mother, my heart while I am upon the earth, do not rise up against me as my witness. Continuing from the third line, the hieroglyphic text reads, M Chasef Ari M Jat M Rak Ari M Ba. Nachar aha neb amentit. Do not oppose me in the tribunal. Do not be inimical against me in the presence of the great Nachar, Lord of the West. The fifth line reads, As sama ni en ta imi wet at pet wa ahi tep ta. Indeed, I have joined myself to the earth in the great western side of the sky. May I endure upon earth. The final six lines on the back of this stela comprise a form of the text known as Chapter 2 of the Book of the Dead, or Book of Going Forth by Day. It is a spell to come forth by day and live after dying. Beginning in the upper right-hand corner of line 6, the hieroglyphic text begins, Jed medu en ausir sma wa'ast, achif en chansu ma'a charu. Words spoken by ausir, the deceased, sma priest, of wa'ast. Thebes, Achaf and Chansu, true of voice. Starting toward the end of the sixth line, moving through most of the seventh, we read, Awau, Pesed M Yah, O unique one, shining as Yah, a moon deity. Starting toward the end of the seventh line, moving through the eighth to the beginning of the ninth, we read, Per Achsir, Achaf and Chansu, Emm. May Ausir, the deceased, go forth among your multitude to this outside. Starting near the beginning of the ninth line on the right hand side, moving through it to the beginning of the tenth, we read Wahau Amu Achu Wen Nef Duat. Deliverer of those who are in the sunshine. Open for him the Dua'at, transitionary realm. Starting near the beginning of the tenth line on the right-hand side, moving through it, concluding with the entirety of the eleventh, we read, As ausir achfen chansu perem haru ar art merat tef nept tep ta emem achu. Indeed, ausir the deceased, Achaf and Chansu shall go forth by day to all that he desires upon earth among the living.